Hi sharks, welcome back. Today I'm going to be opening a couple things. Actually, you know, I'm only going to open one thing on this video and then I'm going to open another thing on another video. I got two things in the mail today. Um, this is, I believe, something I've been waiting to show. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot your name, your username. I got a migraine. Uh, I'm not thinking well today. But anyway, somebody was telling me recently <coughs> that she um, said that she was at a river like like I was and that she saw this beautiful scene and thought it would be a wonderful thing to paint. And she got overwhelmed by the amount of scenery because it all looked so beautiful and it's like, where do you begin? So many of us have that problem with that where do you begin thing. You remember me showing you this plastic viewfinder. It's called the View Catcher. Um, it looks like this. It has a little circle in the middle so that you can check the value of color and see if it matches middle gray or not. This is mid gray. And then it has little markings on the sides. Um, 8 by 12, 9 by 12, and 11 by 14 are on one side. And then 8 by 10 and 12 by 16 are on the other side. And you can just figure out what composition would look good with your size paper. But it's such a small area that you can still kind of see everything around it. And you want to get that tunnel vision. And what I have done when I'm left without anything in the field is I do this. And I try to close off the sides of things around me. Or I do this. It's not a square. You can do the whole square thing, but then again, you're going to lose. You can do this and try to cut off some of your, your area that way. Um, but then I saw somebody online that had one of these. And I think that's what's in here. I hope that's what's in here. Because I've been wanting it. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is the best thing since sliced bread, you know? I mean, it's just, it's so nifty. And it's inexpensive. So, but they sure give you a... I love how they give you these $100 wine vouchers, but you have to spend $160 on wine. Um, oh, I've got paint, too. Oh, we'll open that first. I forgot what I ordered. Oh, this is just my Quinacridone Magenta. I do have some other colors coming. I think I ordered that Aussie Rich Gold or whatever. I wasn't going to get it. But then I thought, you know, I've been wanting to try it. I have other colors that are very similar. I also got Shadow Violet, which I've been wanting to know more about. Um, and I mentioned that in my video, but if you guys were skipping over areas, you wouldn't have heard me asking for the opinion. Or maybe you guys just don't have it, so you couldn't give me your opinion. Then I also ordered... Got those two... Oh, Quinacridone Rose. I wanted to try that. Um, it's a moderately staining rose color. And then I usually use Quinacridone Pink, which is a low staining color. But I wanted something in between so that when I do more bot botanicals, if I want to lay glazes, I can have something that's a little more staining underneath that's not going to lift the color up when I put a transparent color down, you know? Um, well big box for two little bitty items this big. This is the thing that I wanted to show you though. Um, it's called the Zoom Finder and it's made in the USA. It comes in this nice heavy duty plastic pouch um, which would be great for storage. The card itself is also plastic. Gives you instructions on how to use it. So we'll read along together. It says, um, here's the front of it. It has two boxes, a square one and a rectangular one, so that you can choose which size of uh, dimension you want. Um, and then it says, for a rectangle zoom finder, 
tilt the zoom finder until the word zoom finder is level. So you do that and once it's level then your rectangle is level. I guess that's a good way to look at it. Um, then it says hold the zoom finder with your thumb and index fingers thumb and index and middle fingers as in figure one like this so you're gonna go like this this hand would be over here and then you're gonna go like this to make it bigger and smaller only it's got to be level so that's how you would make it bigger and smaller and then um, move the zoom finder opening over your picture this is the thing that I found oh it was mind of watercolor that's who it was this is great for, and this is why I wanted it, not so much for in the field, although I think this would be great because you can block so much, holding it closer to your face, you can block so much of the periphery out while you're looking through this to find out how much you want to put in your composition. And if it's a distant composition and you want to bring it forward, you're going to, of course, make your your space smaller to bring more of the the distance closer or vice versa if you want to have more of it in the photo or in the painting then you're gonna make it bigger um, but the thing that's really cool about this is that if you're looking through let's say a magazine or a book and there's something that you want to paint, you can choose your composition with this. This is great for coming up with composition, not only in the field when you're doing plein air painting, but also, oh my God, hang on a second. Sorry about that. Um, but it's not only good in the field, but it's great for um, finding composition on a photo. When you take a photo, there are so many choices. Um, like I was showing you the other day. I don't know if it made it into the video I posted or if it's in another video. I have a bunch of videos that I haven't posted yet. They're piling up, um, and i got to get them out there, but I, I just haven't been around the Internet or I haven't been feeling well enough to do it. So eventually you'll see them all, but they might be coming in different orders and that kind of thing. Um, just depending on the editing that needs done, but let me turn the camera around and I'm going to show you how this works for finding composition on a photograph. Okay, I just grabbed a book off of my um, bookshelf and I think I can find some photos in this that will work for this, but you can do this on your monitor, on your computer screen, or an iPad, um, or whatever um, is big enough. You might even be able to do it on your phone by going really small with these. Yeah, you could. You could narrow your focus down really itty bitty if you want to. But um, anyway, uh, here we go. Perfect. Um, let's take this one for an instance. This photograph of this woman working at, it looks like a vegetable stand or fruit stand. She either has some apples or tomatoes there. There's a lady with bananas over here. There's somebody back at a counter in the behind them and then another person. So there's a lot going on here. It still makes a wonderful composition, but what if you felt it was too much for you to take on? You could take this zoom finder and narrow the focus down. Let's say, well, this is obviously the focal point because this red just pops off the page and they used the green to make it pop here. Um, it could have been green in the photo or in, in real life. Let's say you want this woman who's standing there waiting for a customer or whatever. You can narrow this down and make it just about there. You don't want to cut her feet off. but um, And that, that could be a really good composition right there in itself. Or maybe you like this woman with the bananas. So you choose this over here. Um, you can use a little bit of the yellow tint above, bring it right up to the edge of the table line, play with it, and see, now it looks like that tent is her tent. But it's actually the one behind them, I think. But you've just changed that composition, giving that illusion that it's her tent. 
there's so much that you can do with these things. Oh, no, it was green. There's the actual photo down there below. You guys are probably screaming at me. Hey, hey. So let's say that's the size of your, tele your cell phone screen. You can do the same thing there with that by going like this to say, hmm, do I like that? Do I like this over here? Um, do I just want that man in the back who is way up here? Um, I'm on the square one. I wanted the rectangle one. Uh, you could do that and then just take her head out of the picture completely. Um, you can do any number of things. Same thing over here. You've got a group of people here, a group of people over here. Which one do you want to focus on? I like these because, um... I like the colorful things going on here. We got red against green again. She's selling rugs or something. She seems to be looking at the photographer. Um, but I would take this and just check it out. See what it is I like about each one of these things. I like that. I like that. I also like adding the tent in for a little extra and I like the whole thing I mean there's so many choices and again you can use the photograph here to do the same thing when you're deciding about what it is that you want to use out of your photo do you just want that little piece um, just play with it in fact he his photo here doesn't even show as much of the tent he added more in so and he took the man out there's a man sitting here he took that man out completely. So they made they made choices themselves. He put a little girl next to this woman. There's no little girl next to her in the photo. So just mess around with things. But this Zoom Finder can really help you find composition. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, I will put a link to this Zoom Finder from Jerry's Artorama in the description box below. And um, I, I think it was Mind of Watercolor who I saw this with, but I can't be sure. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you this Zoom Finder because it's a really awesome little invention. It's plastic, so it'll, it should hold up and last. And it comes with this plastic cover, which is nice too. So um, remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Have a great day, everybody. God bless you. Bye-bye.